The first thing I think is one of the most important tips and it doesn't matter what kind of hair you have, what texture, what race you are, this tip can work for every single person because it is that important. And this is Native American hair growth secrets. Native Americans have some of the most beautiful hair in the world and i know you guys love my indian hair growth secrets i thought i need to discover the secrets of the native americans because they have long beautiful luscious locks and yes although our hair most likely if you're watching this video you might have similar hair to me although we don't have similar hair to them we can still learn a lot because i have found some gems okay if you don't know me my name is angelica i post videos twice a week every single week all about growing long healthy natural hair and a little bit of fun stuff here and there so if that seems interesting consider subscribing the subscription button is right down there as well as the bell icon make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications every single time i post also if you're wondering what my hair looks like this is what it looks like right now i'm deep conditioning it so i just decided to wear a head wrap so i look slightly presentable so let's get into it okay the first thing i think is one of the most important tips and it doesn't matter what kind of hair you have what texture what race you are this tip can work for every single person because it is that important and this is native americans truly love and respect their hair okay what you focus on grows that is literally a fact if you focus on negative things you're going to get more of the negative things. if you focus on positive things you are going to get more of the positive things you know you might see someone with like a really nice car or a handbag or something and you look at them and you're just like oh, wow i don't know that person but i can tell they really take care of that thing because maybe before they put the handbag down they put like a little tissue so it doesn't get any dust on it you know so many different things because they're like i care about this thing and i'm truly going to protect it and take care of it if you do not take care of your hair if you do not love your hair it is very easy for you to easily damage it because you don't really care that much it's just it just happens to be there sure you'd like it to be better but it's just there native americans have strong emotional ties to their hair and so that's why it's always so long and luscious and beautiful because they truly care about it and it is important to them so it is that simple and the way they care for their hair and truly love their hair is actually very similar to the indian cultures and the chinese and japanese people like the yao women who use rice water the next one is what you are probably all thinking or the haters who want to come and comment what you always comment yes it is tip two the reason why native americans have extremely long shiny luscious hair is because it's also part of their genetics a study was done amongst i think it's only been done amongst men i don't know if it's done if it's been done with men women but a lot of men have had studies done and found that even men who are not 100% Native American, if they found that they belong to the Alaskan Bridge ancestry, there was like an 80% chance that they would not get alopecia. Not that their hair is going to grow faster than anyone, there was just a much lower chance of balding like ever, just because of genetics only. So yes, genetics plays a part as with everyone. But research has also shown that even though genetics play a big part in mostly your hair texture your curl pattern and what your hair looks like like the color the way you treat your hair and the things that you eat can actually influence the way your dna the way your genetics are expressed in your hair so yes genetics are involved but it's not the only thing we have way more tips to get through so get your pen and paper and forget about your genetics okay tip three is another one that is very similar to the yao women of china and with this one the native americans actually do not cut their hair like ever they do not cut their hair so if you're wondering why your hair is growing so slow compared to someone who's like a native american and you're saying oh my god they just have good genetics their hair is all the way down to the down to their ankles first of all their hair is bone straight so of course it's gonna look so much longer than yours but also if you continuously cut your hair you're like okay i'm gonna bleach my hair i want to get rid of the bleach i'm gonna cut that off okay let's start growing it again you know what i don't really like being natural i think i'm gonna relax my hair then you're like, okay, you know what? Relaxer isn't actually for me. Let me go back to natural. So think of how many times you cut your hair. That impacts it. Native Americans do not cut their hair. If there's maybe a big death in the family or something that's very traumatic to them that makes them feel like they need to cut their hair, they will 
not throw their hair in the bin. They will cut it and then they will burn it in sage and they'll perform like a ceremony when they get rid of their hair. The Yao women do something similar because when they cut their hair, they actually keep it and stack it on top. And they believe that their hair is actually an extension of their goals, their feelings, their emotions, their thoughts and experiences. They believe that that is all connected to their hair and that is why it is such a big deal when they cut it. And then another one of the reasons why they actually burn it in sage is because in their culture, it's actually disrespectful to just throw your hair in the bin. Okay, the fourth one is very important and something that I personally am very into. And this is they use a lot of herbal remedies like herbal ointments and oils and teas. So they don't only apply them to their scalp, they also ingest them because I've talked about this a bunch of times on this channel. What you put in your body is just as important as what you put on your hair because your hair grows from the inside. We're not like Barbie dolls with brain stuffed full of hair and then you just kind of pull it out and then it continues to come out longer. Is there hair in my head? No. Like actually like in there? I always thought it grew from me. Now you've got hair follicles up here. And then also once your hair grows out of your head, it is basically dead and you're just maintaining it and keeping it as moisturized and hydrated and preventing it from breakage as much as you can because it's basically dead once it's out of your scalp. So what you need to do is have a great routine to take care of it on the outside and take care of it in the inside by eating things that actually promote hair growth as well. So some of the things that they use are aloe vera. They use aloe vera in ointments on their scalp and also they eat it as well in foods, however they decide to make it. I personally, aloe vera, I don't know, it doesn't agree with me. When it is perfectly formulated into a product or it's like, you know, when you, when you find 99% aloe vera gel in a container or something like that, that perfectly works for me. But getting it straight from the plant, I'm actually allergic to, you know, that sap that comes out before the gel. And it's very irritating to me. So I rather just not deal with it and find something else that works for me. So aloe vera incorporated into a product, incorporated into food. Perhaps if I can't taste it, I do not mind it at all. That is perfect. But if you like aloe vera, that is one of the things Native Americans actually use a lot. Next, there's something called saw palmetto palmetto it is a red berry and it is indigenous to native lands and they dry it in the sun and then they use it the same way they would use it in some tea or they would make some sort of ointment or oil and saw palmetto actually has it blocks the hormone that can increase your chances of getting hair loss these days you can find almost anything on amazon so if you guys would like me to try a native american oil a diy one that i can make myself please let me know in the comment section below and i'll find as much ingredients as i can online purchase them and then make it so make sure you comment fast because it's probably going to take like a month for the things to get to me so speaking of ingredients that are native to those lands another one is called stinging nettle now this one is also a dht blocker and this means it stops the testosterone from being converted into dht and this can prevent balding now you might be thinking i'm a woman i don't think i have testosterone that is a man thing no women have testosterone as well we just have much less than men in most cases some women have more some women have less but on average women have less testosterone than men sometimes when your hormones start to change maybe you're getting older maybe you get pregnant you might find that the levels are very inconsistent and off and this can actually cause you to get hair loss and so something that has a DHT blocker in it can actually help you maintain hair growth and this could be a big factor in why they do not experience balding almost at all because not only do they put this infusion on their hair in oils but they also ingest it in food as well. So this is something that actually just grows in the wild and they would just pick it from there and directly use it. There was no buying it from Amazon or doing anything. It was just easily available and they could use it. Another great thing, aside from the DHT blocker, it actually contains a lot of amino acids and iron. Iron is extremely amazing when it comes to hair growth because if you're low in iron, your hair is going to suffer, okay? Because your hair, again, I say this a lot, but your hair is not a vital organ. If you're lacking in iron, it's gonna go to everywhere else in your body that needs it first, like your blood, and it's going to ignore your hair. So anything that has a little bit of extra iron would actually help. If you're wondering, other things that have iron are things like spinach, red meat, and fish. Now, there are a few more herbs and spices and ingredients that they use, of course, that 
I do not exactly know right now, but these are just examples of some of them. I don't think I need to mention all of them, mainly because if you notice, most of these areas use herbs and spices that have similar effects, but it just comes in a different form that's easily available to where they are. For example, Indians use gooseberries, you know, amla, and all these different ingredients that they can easily find that are grown in India. So it's actually very worth it to look into what's actually near wherever you are because you might find a lot of things, it might not be the same thing, but the properties might be almost the same. For example, I use a lot of Moringa because Moringa is really good. Surely there's other things that are just as amazing as Moringa out there, but Moringa is very available to me. There's so many Moringa trees where I live and there's Moringa powder in almost every single store and it literally costs like $2 or something. So it's cheap, readily available, and it's a superfood, so it has amazing ingredients. So these ingredients I'm giving you are not necessarily for you to say, okay, now you have to run to Amazon and if you want those benefits, you have to use exactly what they are using you can just go and find something else that is similar like rice water that may have similar benefits like amino acids a little bit of protein vitamins E B K you might use that as a substitute and the reason why I'm emphasizing this as well is because I don't want you to ignore every other tip that I've given you because you're just like ah that's the one I know you guys love DIYs because sometimes I'll post another video that is extremely informative and you do not care because you just want the rosemary oil recipe that's gonna make your hair grow but if you ignore everything else even these are not going to be that much helpful because if you're very violent if you don't do the other things that they do and you just go to the oil and you're like you know what i don't think this is effective it might not be that their oil or tea is ineffective it might just be that everything else you're doing is not helping so please don't go away now because there's more things that they do that actually contribute to their long healthy luscious hair so this one is number five and it is washing and protective styling these could be two separate tips but i think it works well together as one so the first one is their hair is usually in a protective style which means they don't have to wash it as often. So here's the thing, even the softest, luscious, most beautiful, shiny hair out there can get dry. And so I think it works hand in hand. They don't shampoo often because their hair is usually in protective styles, but also their hair is in protective styles so that they don't have to shampoo often. So their hair is usually in a very similar protective style to the Indians, which is it's either in one large French braid or Dutch braid construction. It's either in one big braid down the back or possibly two braids that come down. And if you notice, whether it's a French braid, a Dutch braid, a long braid down the back or two braids coming down the sides, it is never tight. It is never, it's never braided all the way down to the scalp. It's very loose and then the end is not braided super tiny. It's always stopped with like a hair tie or something soft that also doesn't squeeze the hair super tight. It just holds it and prevents it from unraveling. This means they would probably only comb their hair when it's time to rebraid. So they will also only comb their hair maybe once to twice a week and meaning they would only wash their hair possibly once to twice a week. I'm not sure exactly how longer they go because honestly there isn't that much information about that but from the research that I've done it is obvious that they do not wash their hair for sure like every two days because that makes a big difference and I know that we as naturals also don't usually wash our hair every two days but the protective style is very important because we love to manipulate our hair okay wash and go, high bun, sleek bun, cornrows, super tight box braids, okay? They do not do so many fancy hairstyles. They also almost never use heat on their hair. Things like flexi rods, curling wands, anything like that. Their hair is so low manipulation that I'm sure they also experience a level of shedding that is much less than the average person because they don't manipulate their hair. It's hardly moving. It's just in the same state all the time. And the way they braid it also allows them to have access to their scalp when they want to put any more of oils or anything like that. They don't have to take the braid down if they don't want to because the braids are so loose that they have perfect access to their scalp to add those oils in, which leads me into my next oil. And yes, I put it by itself purposely because of course I love this oil, but also, I found it separately as a tip when I was researching. They had all the other ingredients together and then they had this one by itself because it is that important and you guys can guess what it is, rosemary. Now they love to use rosemary and they also love to use mint. Now they usually use wild mint. I have 
lots of different types of mint in my area. I use mint essential oil, but I also drink mint tea every single day. In my yard, we've got so many types of mint. We've got peppermint, spearmint, chocolate mint, apple mint, and they all have very similar benefits. So you don't have to worry and be like, I don't have the wild mint that they have. Now, I've talked about this many times. Mint is amazing for hair growth. It is extremely stimulating on the scalp. It can help unblock follicles to help promote hair growth. And then rosemary is one of the most highly researched natural ingredients out there. It is amazing for hair growth. It has been shown to be just as effective as 2% minoxidil, which is something that is prescribed by dermatologists to boost hair growth. It also can help increase blood flow to your follicles and allow the actual follicles to perform better. It is also known to reduce or prevent premature graying. I just want to elaborate a little bit on this because on my other rosemary videos, I've seen a lot of people ask Asking me if it's going to reverse graying. Here's the thing. Once your follicle produces gray hair, it cannot reverse and start producing black hair again unless you do something evasive like a hair transplant. So once it's already gray, you can't reverse that. But sometimes, this has actually happened to me more than once, if you're treating your hair very badly and especially your diet is also bad, you might experience this thing where like your hair is growing out black and then a halfway it's gray and it starts to turn gray and you start to have a little bit of more like gray hairs in areas where you wouldn't usually have it but it's not gray from the root that can actually be reversed and your pigment is going to start growing normally again but it's not going to reverse any hair that's already gray this can possibly help delay the process of going gray and if you look at native americans you can find old pictures back in the day and recent ones now you'll find that very old people similarly again to the yao women have very dark black hair, like they're like in their 80s before they start experiencing gray hair. And so the rosemary can actually really help that. And of course, again, they infuse it into their oils as well. So they use rosemary oil, mint, they also infuse that into their oils, but they also have things like rosemary tea and mint tea. I personally actually don't like the taste of rosemary as a tea. I like it in other food, like in chicken and stuff, but I do not like rosemary in a tea, so that is something I will not be doing. Maybe if it's a rosemary and mint tea, I might be into it, but I love mint tea, and I actually drink mint tea or mint green tea every single day. And when I say every single day, I mean about three to five cups every single day, because I do drink a lot of tea. The next thing that they do is something I personally love as well, and this is scalp massages. Native Americans are actually known to do scalp massages every single day. Now, I am a fan of this. Now, I would like to make this a priority to actually do a scalp massage every single day. I'm going to be honest with you, although I want to do it every single day, most of the time, it's not that I don't have the time, I just use my time doing other things. So they will do a scalp massage every single day. They do not say they use oil every single day and I highly doubt they use oil every single day because I think it would be way too much even for their hair. They do have long, very thick hair, but I think it would still get weighed down because I my hair is definitely thicker than theirs in terms of a single strand and it would definitely be weighed down. They've actually mentioned that they do oil their scalp really frequently, and I'm assuming that's around one to three times a week, but on the other days of the week, you can still do the scalp massage, and you have leftover oil on your scalp from the day before. Even if most of it is absorbed, there'll be enough there to not break your hair when you're doing a scalp massage, and they obviously know how to do scalp massages because they are the masters, okay? Native Americans, Indians, they know how to do scalp massages. And Japanese people, I've seen Japanese scalp massages before. And they are just so soothing and they truly promote hair growth because they will make your scalp tingle. They will send blood flow to that area which will open and awaken your follicles and help you grow your hair grow longer, thicker, stronger, and faster. The next thing is something that is extremely important to anyone's hair growth journey. And this one makes a lot of sense for Native Americans and this is that they eat organic food okay most of the food and most of the ingredients that they use in their hair are things that they would just find in the area naturally grown so it would there would be no processed food there would be no pasta nothing like that now I'm not saying go to those extremes but I am just emphasizing that they are extremely healthy because they do not eat a lot of processed and fatty foods everything is taken straight from nature and their food is obviously very balanced as well when it comes to having lots of macronutrients and having micronutrients. And the easiest way to tell is because they use so many herbs and spices 
and ingredients like the berries and all that that have lots of micronutrients and then the macronutrients are obviously protein fats and carbohydrates so whether it's potatoes with beef with meat whatever food that they have it is all perfectly balanced and that is the perfect recipe for long thick healthy hair the more unhealthy things you have for your hair the less nutritious things that you have to actually nourish your body and the less extra you have to go to your hair because again your hair is not a vital organ so nothing that's not necessary is going to go to your hair now for the bonus this is very very important first of all i want to say that Lots of the articles that I read spoke about Native Americans like they don't exist anymore, which I found very strange. Because yes, obviously they don't live in the native land anymore. Maybe there's like a few small areas where there's still populations of, of Native Americans, but they are still there today, just living in modern society. They did not go extinct, okay? They're still around and they obviously still use some of these practices. And so obviously a lot of them now might not still have access to all those old herbs and spices and all the ingredients that they still used to use, but there's always equivalents and they would still use the same practices like not cutting their hair, doing frequent scalp massages. And obviously this is a generalization. So not every single Native American is going to ab abide by this. And a lot of them are now mixed, but they might still do the same practices and you might see that they still have the same hair. They still wear their hair in the same styles, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna go to college and meet a Native American who has like a bob and she's like, you know what? I'm not that tied to my hair. This is just a generalization and I couldn't find as much information as I wanted. So if you are Native American and you're watching this, please tell us your secrets in the comment section below. Tell me if I got something wrong, if I got something right, more things that we can do that we can learn from you to help grow our hair and we would love to know them. Thank you so much for watching. Hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. Watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here if you'd like to see any of my older videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!